Welcome back, fellow court birders. The rules committee dropped quite a big bomb yesterday onto the commander community. But where do we go from here? What does that mean for the prices of these cards in the future? And also, which cards do profit from the fact that Mana Crypt has been banned? It's time for another installment of... Strong stonks and welcome back, fellow court birders. This is my only copy of Mana Crypt. I have owned another one around one or two years ago, and as you can see, it is a little bent and has some scratches on it. And yeah, now it's illegal in Commander to be played with. I played it in my Hana Premodern deck. It's Still a playable card in general, but not in Commander, and I will have to find a different card for the specific deck. And I already have one in mind, but, but we'll see about that. I also owned a Jeweled Lotus around two weeks ago. I traded it away, luckily for me, to a friend, and yeah, they didn't want anything back, but I think in our next trade I will just give them a little bonus or something, just so we don't both feel bad about having made the trade just so recently. I also don't own any Dockside Extortionists. I thought about trading for one, but it's just too expensive. It, it was too expensive, it cost around 80 bucks. And yeah, the question is, which cards will profit the most from this ban and I think the Mana Vault is one that will go up in price and we can also already see price movement on this card actually on the American market and the European market is already on the move as well. So yeah, I warned the channel about the card price rise and if you want to get these notifications ahead of time do subscribe to the channel and help me reach the 1000 subscriber goal and you get something back for that. You get notifications and obviously non-financial advice. This is not a reserved list card, the Mana Crypt. These are all the copies I already owned and had in different decks. This I actually did not have in a deck. I think this one, this one I didn't have in a deck. And yeah, it's, it's not on the reserved list. So do what you think is best with the information I have been given you, but these currently are doubling and even tripling in price as we speak. Yes, very sad. Anyway, it got me thinking. And I think this video has been made a little too late, sadly, just because I was lying around sick in bed yesterday. I was, I'm feeling quite better today, but yeah, the channel has been warned via my community post. This one is a good to lightly played copy or an, I'd say, MP copy in American terms, probably. Now the question that arises is, what else will the future bring? How do people trust or distrust the Rules Committee, by the way, for the people who think that the Rules Committee is, like, controlled by Wizards? It's not. It's independent from them. So Wizards is making the cards and being like, hey, Jewel Lotus is a fun card to play in Commander, right? And we tried it for like, what, four years in Commander Legends? And now the rules committee decided, no, it's not fun, and they banned the card. So even though it was recently reprinted and the Mana Crypt had the special art in the Exelan set, the rules committee just doesn't care about that. And Wizards cares about making money and the Rules Committee cares about, well, making a fun, creating a fun experience for Commander players. Well, more or less, we all know that MTG is also kind of part investing. Sometimes you spend a whole bunch of mana, sometimes you spend a whole bunch of money and yeah, then cards get banned and you lose half your money or even more. Like, I don't know, Jeweled Lotus is like now a 20 to $10 card. So like you lose 90% of your money. So it's always a risk. So these are also at risk, though I don't think they are in imminent danger of being banned. Since they are just so much slower, they also cost one mana and they don't untap only when you 
tap a additional four mana to untap them again. There are some shenanigans where you can just use an artifact that can untap them again or unwinding clock or the like, but then you would have to jump through even more hoops and mana crypt just untaps, gives you a bunch of damage and then you can just reuse it again, which is not the case for this one. Another card that is not untapping just by itself only for mana is the Grim Monolith, which I think will be another card that will be hit with a buyout. Since it is very similar, it costs another mana more than the Mana Crypt, but does not punish you in any way. So I have a Gold Border one, which is not tournament legal, but we all know that Commander is a fun format, a casual format. So I don't, I don't mind, and this was just cheaper at the time. I owned a foil one, actually, and um, I traded away to a person who gave me a whole bunch of cards I could actually play with and use since I didn't want to play with a foil version. And then I got a couple of gold border ones for my decks since no one will mind me playing gold border cards. It's actually quite heavy how the rules committee dropped this bomb, I'd say since they just banned three very expensive cards. No one cares about Matt Natty, by the way. <laughs> very expensive cards. Sorry to everyone who built a Natty deck, I'm sorry. Some people care about that, but Natty was banned in Modern and it's not a very fun Commander to play against. And I think it had it coming to be also banned in Commander. But banning three expensive cards at the same time without real warning. I think they warned us about the dark side, but not about the two other cards. And yeah, people losing so much money with one hit. Also, stores got hit very hard because these are cards, these, these are cards that actually people invest in. And and also like like to spend money on. I actually almost traded for another mana crypt for a bunch of cards, and then I was like, nah, I want probably some smaller cards to be able to have it a little more liquid. And I'm glad I didn't take it, so I was really lucky in regards to the ban. I have one old border cards that is on the banned list now. So yeah, I think what they should have done is like ban the dark side, I guess, first, because that is what they said they might do at some point, and then give us a heads up that the crypt and the lotus are now on the chopping block. Mm, they will test it and, and then at some point actually ban them, maybe in November or so, to give us some time to actually let it sink in and think about what that could mean if it actually got banned. So it is possible that the vaults are banned, but at the same time right now, I don't think they will do it again very soon since they just have so many players that are outraged. So. Yeah, well, we'll see. Another card I think that is also on the reserve list that might get some attention is the Metal Worker. I recently traded a foil version away of this one and now I have a normal one still, which I'm not currently using. I actually took apart my Kozilek deck since everyone was playing Eldrazi's and then I, yeah, it wasn't special anymore. And yeah, I have a Metal Worker left over here and yeah, this will find home in Another artifact deck that I'm building. Another card that I think might get some more attention now that Mana Crypt, as well as the Jeweled Lotus and Dark Side are banned, which are all mana-based cards, is the Lotus Petal, which I own a couple of. It's a German version with a little kind of bend down here, which I don't mind since it still looks very nice. But also all the Moxons, I own some Chrome Mox here which is another zero mana artifact and think could get some more attention of people who wanna replace the banned cards now. It's a clean copy, maybe in excellent condition or LP in American terms. I also own a foil copy of Chrome Mox from my 30 year secret layer box, which I opened on the channel as well. And I was lucky enough to open it in foil, which is really pretty. And I'm happy to have this one. Again, these three here are not on the reserved list, so these could get easier banned and also easier reprinted. I don't think that the reserved list cards are being touched soon just because of their very small prevalence or 
being quite rare in the sense of that not many people own these and there is like this obstacle or hindrance of people not wanting to spend that much money on single cardboard rectangles but then again they spend $150 maybe for a mana crypt or maybe they were lucky enough to spend like 60 bucks for this one no metal worker I think is like around a hundred bucks so yeah we'll see we'll we'll see what the money flows to but I think the reserve list could also get a resurgence just because of the fact that they only banned like modern cards and not pre-modern cards we also have Mox Diamonds that could also get some more attention since this is such a strong artifact being able to be cast for zero mana and discarding a land card which other than that has no downside and taps for any colored mana. I actually own a second copy which I think is in a little worse condition. I want to own four of these but then again it's quite expensive and I'm also focusing on set cubes on my channel so yeah this this will be an investment for another time to get two more copies so I have a playset of Mox Diamonds but this might be a card that I would put in my pre-modern Hana deck yep since it's very useful and yeah, kind of replaces a mana crypt now do I think that the changes to the ban list so the inclusion of these four cards onto the ban list will be rolled back I, I don't think so I wouldn't speculate on this just because if they would roll it back that would mean that they could never ban cards really just because the community says so I mean the outcry is quite big I for myself think well I was lucky I only own one card but I also don't really care about the ban list I think make your own ban lists talk to each other talk to your play groups what you think is fun to play with which power levels you have and just play whatever you want and play with banned cards also just communicate but then again it sucks to lose money so yeah the way they approached it kind of was bad so I hope the next time they learn from it and give us a warning and then ban the card rather than just banning three cards out of nothing and nuking the whole market so yeah I don't think they will roll it back in any way maybe there is a cdh rules committee coming at some point but this is a topic i don't know anything about and i don't know how it would appear maybe enough people would have to tell the rules committee that they should create a cdh rules committee or maybe some people would just say now they are the rules committee and they do that yeah i don't, I don't know how they come to life I have an altered Lion's Eye Diamond here in German, which is very pretty, by German artist that altered the card, which was poor at first and kind of brought it back to life. I think it had some water damage. I'm not going to take it out of the sleeve uh, just because I don't know about its integrity, but I think this could be another card that might spike some interest depending on what deck you're going to play. Maybe in a flub stick, for example, this card could be quite strong as well but now I do want to hear from you what are your thoughts on the banning of the four cards how many copies did you own and let me know how many mana vaults you own and if I was able to help you give you a heads up looking forward to reading you all click the two buttons to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one bye bye